on that deadly plane crash in Moscow that killed 41 people, including an American. Officials have recovered the black boxes. ABC's Dan Harris is in Moscow with new reporting. Good morning, Dan. Took off from Sherry Medeva Airport en route to Murmansk and flew into storm clouds. It was in the air for 28 minutes, during which time it was reportedly hit by lightning. Making matters worse, investigators are also reportedly looking into whether the emergency response was too slow. All right, so yeah, a lot going on in this um, accident. Um, you can see in this picture, there's no fire trucks to be seen. Um, a lot of the patients have already egressed quite a ways. Um, no one's there to help them as well, those who have injuries. So um, today we're going to go over, um, were they too late? What was the reasoning and why weren't these people helped? So they're trying to be blamed, but according to the black box, which has the recording of what the pilots were talking to the, um, the tower about, when asked if the plane would require help on landing, the pilot told the controller no. So they told the, the pilot told the tower no, they don't need help and they should be able to land normally. Um, he said uh, no for everything is okay normal so their only problems they had were radio communications so with that being said the tower who normally would contact us at the fire station and tell us hey you know you have an aircraft um that's in in trouble you should get your trucks ready and respond they're not going to do that because the pilot is saying it's just a communication error the lightning took out our communications um and then going on to here according to russia's transport ministry the airport emergency system was not activated to alert fire crews until after the plane landed and you can see that when it landed is when the fireball erupted because the pilot did not take out he didn't dump any of his fuel so there's a, a lot of fuel in there all it takes plus he had a hard landing so that hard landing causes sparks which causes the fuel to ignite and because there was all that fuel in there it turned into a big fireball so a lot of things are going on um, that you know, it comes out when that that's why that black box that they have is so important because it lets the full story um, be told. So the firefighters were probably at the station, didn't weren't notified. And then the plane crashed. They got called and they got responded. So here you can see every second counts. I mean, it doesn't take much time before the fuselage is impacted less than a minute you can already tell it's already burning through um the the slides are deployed people are escaping but there's no water on that fire so it's just gonna you can see the strong wind with all of that smoke that black smoke it's traveling pretty quickly so there's a lot of oxygen being um, fed to those flames so here's the fire department. Um, they're doing a good job using the wind to their advantage. Um, they're trying to put out this fire, but sadly with all this heavy smoke already in the cockpit, that means everybody behind. All it takes is one breath of that black smoke and uh, that's all it takes and you're gonna be unconscious. So this truck is, see how the wind is blowing his stream, blowing the stream. It's not as effective, not really effective at all. Also, you don't want to put your stream in the path of egress. So you don't want, you don't want your stream because this is the only oxygen that people can breathe. So if you shoot water into the oxygen source, then it's going to cause all of that fire in there to bank down and then it's gonna there's gonna be no livable space for the passengers inside so you want to attack the fire as they're doing here but you also want to protect their path of egress so that they can get out um those are just some things to consider when attacking a fire of russian investigators working inside the charred husk of the plane <laughs> as well as these images from inside the cabin with passengers screaming as they see the rising flame. Yeah, I mean, passengers screaming. This video really takes to heart. You know, this could be family members. 
So when you're on the job, for us, the FAA will come in yearly and they'll test us. I made a video on our FAA FAR 139 requirements. So they come and test us. The FAA tests the fire stations um, around the United States. And they'll go up in the tower and they'll throw a random time response drill. And according to their regulations, we have three minutes for the first truck to put water on the fire. And then four minutes... Um, for all trucks to be on scene putting water in the fire and so with that being said if there's if there's any kind of an alert where a plane is making an emergency landing so this aircraft even though they said everything was okay they return they were they were returning back um with that being said i would treat that as an alert alert two possible and alert three which is meaning that there's a possible indication that a crash could happen they're having some kind of distress in the aircraft. And then with that, um, our our plans are to, we, we spread out our trucks alongside the runway and we just wait for the incoming aircraft. And if it's okay and lands safely, which most of the time they do, then no problem. We just return back to our station. But if it happens to do something like how this aircraft does, then you're right there alongside that runway and all your trucks are just waiting with their turrets all um, in position and you attack the fire immediately so this is a good learning indication even though the tower and the pilots are saying everything's okay as firefighters you should be thinking that maybe worse things could happen and you should stand by accordingly so here's some lessons learned treat every alert as a possible crash like i just said even though it might be a minor alert as it comes in or they may not even you know in, in this case maybe they weren't even called so they had no idea until the plane actually crashed and in that case you just have to be as ready as possible and respond as fast as you can wind direction and weather they did a good job staying up wind um, using the wind to help carry their stream to the aircraft protect the path of egress so always try to make it a better escape for the passengers put your fire stream put your water stream in between the fire and the people to protect them and then also have your triage and medical treatment so have your trucks or even mutual aid um, maybe the the medics you could call them and then have that situated so that the people getting off the aircraft are treated, counted, so you can know exactly how many people were on the aircraft, how many people you have, and how many people were potentially lost and not accounted for. And get those people to the hospital as quickly as possible. So um, I hope you learned something from this. I sure did. And please leave in the comments anything that you thought you saw or um, strategies and tactics that you would do differently. Um, but thanks again for watching.